First trimester screening is a way to do testing to see if the baby has an increased risk of certain genetic problems. It's generally done between the 11th and the 13th week, and there's two components. There's a blood test and there's an ultrasound. The ultrasound actually looks at the thickness of the neck called nuchal translucency, and that can tell you certain things about the risk of having a genetic abnormality. The blood test tests for two different hormones, and that's averaged together to look to see uh, about increased risks of problems. The typical problems that it looks for um, are Down syndrome, which is trisomy 21, and trisomy 18, but it can look for a host of other issues as well. It can also look for certain other problems um, like heart problems uh, and other defects. It does not look for neural tube defects, which is a classic part of second trimester screening. So if you have first trimester screening, you really sort of have a hole in the screening and you need to do a second screening at 16 weeks if you want to really complete the genetic screening. Now, the downside of first trimester screening is that it has a very high false positive rate. If your test comes up positive, it can be one in 100 or even one in 300 risk of a problem. Meaning, if it's one out of 300, that means that for every abnormal test, you have to have 300 abnormal tests to have one abnormal baby. So the vast majority of quote unquote abnormal tests are actually normal children. Most of the abnormal tests, the test is abnormal, but the baby's fine. And that's really the downside of any of the genetic screening is a very high false positive rate. It also has a fairly high false negative rate as far as genetic screening goes. And so it really isn't very useful in and of itself, but only in combination with second trimester screening. Now the other downside of first trimester screening is that if that screening test becomes abnormal, the follow-up test to find out if it's a true positive or a false positive is something called amniocentesis in most areas. And amniocentesis can't be done until about 16 weeks. So there's this month gap for most people between the time that the test says that there might be a problem and the time they can actually do the follow-up test to find out if there's a problem or not. Now there is another test called chorionic villus sampling or CVS that can be done early uh, on at that 10 to 13 week time period. So in other words, if your first trimester screening comes back abnormal, CVS can be done right away. The problem is CVS is not done all over the place. And so it's quite possible that you might live in an area where CVS isn't available. There's also certain downsides to CVS in that it has a lot higher risk of problems than an amniocentesis, and CVS can have false positive and false negative results. Um, so there's downsides to CVS. So the big picture with first trimester screening is that it's a combination of blood test and an ultrasound looking at the thickness of the baby's neck. It has a very high false positive rate, meaning that if the test comes back abnormal, most likely your baby's fine. And you can't, in many instances, resolve that positive, whether it's an abnormal baby or a normal baby, for about a month after the screening. And so in my practice where I live, we don't have CVS available, and I do very few first trimester screens because I find that it tends to cause more anxiety uh, than it relieves. Something to think about and decide whether that test is right for you.